And the ready, set, go for lesson 2.3, the ready portion has us comparing rates of change. So the big thing to start off with is finding out the rate of change for each. And what you should be able to see is that as we increase for number one, we're adding five each step of the way. For B, we have a point here and a point here that crosses some pretty distinct portions of our grid. So we can go up one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one. So the rate of change here would be six over one. This one would be plus five over one. So B would have the greater rate of change. And that's what we're doing for each of these ready portion problems. For number three, $2,500 withheld each week. Jose owes his brother $50, has promised to pay half of what he owes each week until the debt is paid. So for number three, it's $25 per week. Well, for Jose, we have $50 and paying half so it goes 50 then 25 then 1250 then 625 so if you can see the first week it's $25 but then after that it's only 12 and a half and then the rate gets smaller and smaller and smaller so the rate of change for number three the greater rate of change would be a for number five, we have our rate of change as five in this case, okay, our constant ratio. We're multiplying by five each time. And for B, magic pot, every time you put one object into the pot, two of the same object come out. Imagine that you have five magic pots. So you have five magic pots and that every time you put an object into the pot, two of the same come out. So we are actually doubling every single step of the way. So number five for A would have the greater rate of change. It's multiplying by five each step rather than multiplying by two, or sorry, doubling two of the same pot so yeah doubling so we're multiplying it by two each step of the way now we need to figure out if something is linear exponential or neither so for number seven a salary of thirty thousand dollars a year so that's my base salary I know I'm gonna make 30k also I'm going to make a commission on anything that I sell for my company. And it's going to be at the tune of 4.25% of whatever I sell. So if I'm selling $100,000 watches, it's really expensive watches, but $100,000, that means that I'm going to make 4.25% of every watch that I sell. So $4,250. And that is a linear relationship because I can go in a straight line if I sell one watch 425 if I'm selling two watches 8500 three watches and so on so it would end up going up in a straight line if you've heard of the 12 days of Christmas each day I get another group of things so on the first day of Christmas, I get one partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, I get two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, I get three French hens. I also get two turtle doves and I also get a partridge in a pear tree. So on day one, I get one item. On day two, I get three items. On day three, 
I get six items. On day four, I get 10 items. Because if I keep adding those up, I'm getting everything on that day, as well as all the days before. So because of this, there is no constant common difference, and it is not exponential. So we would say that in this case, it would be neither linear or exponential. For number 11, we have 1, 4, 9, 16. And again, I can't, I don't have a constant ratio that's happening here. This is going to be something that when you get into integrated 2, you'll learn about quadratics, where things are squared. But for right now, this is neither a linear relationship, nor is it an exponential one. For number 12, we are, or for the go portion, we're trying to find the geometric mean. So we're trying to figure out how to multiply to get to each next step and eventually get us to the last term that we know. So a couple ways. First, we can take the last, divide it by the first and figure out what number times itself one, two, three, four times gives me 81. We know that that's three, so we'd multiply everything by three. Six, 18, 54, yep, that gives me 162. The other way is to guess and check. And fortunately, most of these are going to be small enough to where we can work through some of these problems fairly efficiently. For number 14, we're going the other direction. So we started at 10, we've got to go to 0.625. So if we do it the plug and chug method, we can we know that we're getting we're starting big we're going small so we know that we're going to be multiplying by a fraction if we multiply by one half we get five we get 2.5 we get 1.25 and then we would end up getting 0.625. For number 15, because this one's a little bit weird, all of a sudden we go from G to GZ to the fourth. What? Taking a look at it, I need to multiply G times something four times. We can do this using the geometric mean. So taking the last term, dividing it by the first term. We need to figure out what we can multiply four times to get z to the fourth. Well, I can take z times z times z times z. Which means that, and this is a little bit tricky, but it's gz, gz squared, gz cubed, and then gz to the fourth. So we're just multiplying a z each next step. Very tricky problem, throwing in the variables. So I wanted to make sure that we're able to figure out what is happening. For 17 to 22, we're trying to find the rate of change. So the tricky part here is that if you look at your inputs, they're not consistent. It makes it a little bit challenging here. So what we can do is we can take the difference, so we know that we're adding 10, and we're adding 5 here. We're adding 20, we're adding 10. So if we do this, 10 over 5, or 20 over 10. And we do the next one, 10 and 5. 
these are all equivalent fractions with a rate of change or slope of 2 over 1. For number 20, the slope formula, being able to find the slope between two points or the rate of change between two points, what we can do is we can, we can call this, and this is something that has been learned. Whoop. some time ago. So you have x1, y1, and you have x2, y2. We're going to call this our first point, this our second point. So what we'll do is we'll pull our x1 is 2 and our y1 is 5. Our x2 is 8 and our y2 is 29. Now the formula to find the slope or the rate of change is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we would take 29, because that's our y2, minus 5, because that's our y1, over 8 that's our x2 minus 2 that's our x1 and when we do this 29 minus 5 is 24 8 minus 2 is 6 so our rate of change is 8 over 1 or just 8 number 22 very similar I'll let you try that one but for number 21 Find two coordinates or two points on the graph that you know it crosses. Create a slope triangle. Okay. See how far up and over. So in this case, we're going up one and over one, two, three, four. So the rate of change here is one over four. Hopefully this helps. Reach out if you have any questions.